Assalamu alaikum, hello and welcome to the ARB collection. My name is Medea, I am a women's health physiotherapist um, and I am live today to talk to you all about staying active in Ramadan um, for our physical and mental well-being. Um, so if you want to drop any questions, hello, um, pop them down below. Um, I have got a little bit of a talk that I want to share with you today as well. Um, and I am back on Saturday to do a little workout with you all. And I'm also here next Monday to do more of a live question and answer session. So if I don't get to answer all the questions today, I will answer them um, next Monday at five o'clock. Um, but uh, yeah, do drop them down and I'll make sure I'll answer them. So I hope you are all doing well, inshallah. Ramadan Mubarak, we're literally a day or so away from being halfway through. Um, you know, inshallah, it's been going well for you. Um, and now it's quite a nice time to reflect back and think how, how you are feeling. Um, you know, you've had quite a few days to get used to it. How are you feeling physically? How are you feeling mentally? How is it affecting kind of your everyday now the kids are at school? You know, how is that affecting your routine, your work life? So drop me down some comments on how you've been finding the last kind of 12 days or so. Um, and kind of if there's anything you're already thinking that you want to change um, in, you know, in the next kind of 17 days or so, um, that will kind of enhance how much you get out of Ramadan. And we can inspire each other and we can inspire the community that Arb has created here as well. Um, and also, um, let me know if you are being active, are you doing any exercise at the moment? Are you doing any um, physical activity, be it going for walks, um, you know, meeting with friends and having a walk around the block, whatever you're doing, let me know. It'd be interesting to see what you're doing already. And then as we kind of discuss options of things that can be done and why we should be doing um, physical activity, you can let me know if that changes on other things you'd like to do or not. So, so welcome to everyone and uh, we get we get started. So just to introduce myself briefly, so my name is Medea, I'm based in London here in the UK. I'm a chartered physiotherapist, so I work with people who have aches and pains. My speciality is women's health, so it's all about the well-being, be it physical, mental, um, our hormones from different times of um, our month cycle, um, and um, so that's, that's my speciality, and I've been very, very um, privileged to be here in front of you today because of um, Arb to do this talk. Um, a quick little stand-up of my outfit, I did a little vote on um, my channel what I should wear so this is the odd play suit um, I think this is for the last spring collection actually um, in case you're wondering what I'm wearing and also my hijabs I can see some questions coming and some comments perfect lovely it's great to know where you're from and also what you're doing and I'm going to come back and scroll through all those um, and check for any questions and comments so please keep them coming it's great to have you involved here so starting off um i think generally speaking we have quite an idea of how exercise helps us physically like we're encouraged to do about 30 minutes of exercise every day most days at least five times a week um, and we kind of understand that you know it helps us with our circulation it helps keep our heart healthy um, especially if you're from a um, black ethnic minority it's important for us to kind of prevent diabetes um, as women it's super important for our bone health whether we've had kids or not as we age the bones and how strong they are how thick they are changes over um, at, over our our aging period um, so it's really important that we're doing that physical exercise especially standing exercises so we're building up the strength in our bones um, and it's giving us that kind of stability and that strength to do what we want really um, 
the aspect I think a lot of us tend to miss or underestimate is the mental health aspect. Um, so it's been so much research in mental health um, regarding the benefits of exercise and there's been like almost, um, so for those that have been on like antidepressants or have anxiety and been on medication for that, exercise has shown to half the amount, the dosage that people actually require. Now that's that's brilliant, you know, because exercise, it can be free, it can be so versatile and flexible, so many different levels, so personal that, you know, in order to cut down your medication by half, that's, you know, absolutely mind blowing. Um, and for those that don't have any um, anxiety or depression or any kind of issues or concerns in that sense, why would you still do it for your mental well-being? Because the biggest thing I mentioned was that circulation now how does that help us mentally well if we're circulating the blood throughout our body it's coming up towards our brain it's going to go to the different parts of our brain that help us with our mental well-being now mental health um, and mental well-being you know slightly interchangeable use but if we're thinking for someone who's generally can seen as healthy the blood go into the different parts of our brain that's affecting our mood it's affecting our um our kind of self image our confidence our body image our self esteem um how good we feel about things how happy we feel about things if we're getting all the exercise that kind of cardiovascular stuff the stretching anything that's exercise based which is releasing those endorphins is releasing the happy hormones in our body is increasing that blood supply to all that um you know all those areas in our brain we are more and more definitely more likely to generally feel better within ourselves now if we're better within ourselves we are going to be a lot nicer to be around we're going to be able to be more helpful to people around us be it whether we've got children and families or whether we've got parents and relatives or even in our work environment you know thinking how productive we are how much we achieve at work our achievements but most of all bringing it back into you know the holy month of ramadan is how how connected we're going to feel if we're feeling well in ourselves mentally physically that is going to really enhance how we are going to feel spiritually as well because if we've got that energy if we've got that right mindset we are going to be a lot more able to do our prayers we're going to be able to do extra stuff that we really want to do in this month um, be it do charity work be it helping our neighbors be it doing more good deeds be it praying more reading more whatever it is that you want to be doing in this month you're going to just find that it's going to be just far more nourishing having that right mindset and the right physical ability to to be able to do that really um so that's where I kind of wanted to go with the with our conversation today because you know when we're praying we are standing a lot longer than our normal prayers it's quite good to think about how we stand so when we're standing we're making sure that we're not just kind of getting tired and getting all really floppy and low we want to stand up tall we want to have equal weight on our left and our right leg we want to draw in our tummy we want to open our chest so we're standing tall so we're breathing correctly our tummy muscles are working our chest is opening so we can read and really feel the words as we're praying as we're reading so that our prayers in themselves become exercise they become the good deeds in themselves of doing doing our prayers doing our abayas and we're getting that physical benefit of it as well and sometimes i catch myself because i teach a lot of pilates and sometimes when I'm doing the exercise, I think, oh my God, this position is like, this is like how we pray. This is how we bow down. This is how we do such that. And it's, it's so interesting that how it resembles those moves of stretching your back and stretching your legs. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, a, it's an opportunity to really enhance that as well. Um, and then, you know, you're standing longer, you're gonna wanna make sure that you're not kind of fatiguing and starting sinking down and you know becoming tired and this way it kind of keeps you awake it keeps you alert it keeps you 
in that moment as well um and um thinking uh, along those lines of you know being able to pray when you're sitting down again you know kind of thinking about a posture like if you were sitting at a desk we know we would sit upright similarly when we're sitting down reading our quran reading our surahs doing our thusbis whatever we're doing just think that you're in a comfortable position and that you move regularly and you're not sitting there for hours on end and you're changing that posture so you're seeing if you can sit back up against the height of the chair maybe a cushion behind your head and try if you can instead of having the current like really low down here try to have it a little bit further up maybe you're reading it on a screen or a device so it can be up further um, instead of being kind of in in your lap so kind of thinking things through like that as well just helps kind of your head position so if it's always down here your neck gets tired you get headaches so just trying to lift yourself up so you're kind of at eye level like i am with the camera just being able to kind of look ahead and just keep that nice and firm and tummy's firm there and you can see clearly you're going to be able to read and you're going to be able to read with intent instead of kind of reading and then suddenly feeling sleepy and all that stuff so um that's kind of the, what i wanted to talk about in terms of that element of being mindful um so in terms of kind of being active being kind of physically doing exercise there's so much variety there's from um you know there's from stretching which i would hugely recommend um if you are sitting and standing more than you would normally um also because you know you're finding you're probably getting less sleep or more broken sleep as i would say in terms of waking up to do your seri to then going back and then waking up to go to work etc etc um so kind of that broken sleep can make us feel a little bit like more tired and fatigued and maybe a little bit more kind of um a bit more easily get moody you know um because we want our sleep we want our food and you know this is this is what we're testing here um so kind of bearing those things in mind that doing that walk or doing those stretches is going to help undo all that kind of extra tension you're kind of holding in your body really um so walking around the block stretches fantastic um doing cardiovascular exercise are so recommended is generally 30 minutes a day um still very important and i'll go on to how we can incorporate this in um so that's really important earlier i mentioned as women it's super important that we're doing exercises in standing why i really like pilates i like standing classes you know aerobics hit whatever you want to do that you really enjoy don't feel just because it's ramadan that you can't do it anymore yeah you can do it maybe sorry just pause there a second um maybe not go for like your most heaviest weight or your longest workout you would do keep it short and often so you know even if you feel i can't get 30 minutes in together or maybe i'll do like 10 minutes here 10 minutes there 10 minutes there and then within a day you know three times you've already done your 30 minutes um and in terms of like with the fasting i find that if you i personally find that just before iftari is when i feel like i've got this sudden urge of en burst of energy you know i can suddenly rustle up everything because we know we're going to be eating soon and i think that's a perfect time to get some cardiovascular exercise in so for me personally this is when i would go for a brisk walk around the block or I'll go for a run um and or you know you know do a, a, a quick workout um from you know something online if you like um other good time to do it is after you've opened your fast now generally you want to leave a good two hours before you um start fast um start doing exercise after a meal so depending if you've had a fairly light iftar you might find that you can do a kind of a bit of a workout about half um an hour later and then have a, have another little meal to make your full meal together um, if you tend to have a heavy meal then yes you are going to have to wait two hours um, and then it depends whether you maybe want to have more of a stretch routine then instead of a, a kind of full-on cardio um, exercise and then the third option is doing it before you keep your fast um, depending if you're early bird maybe you're not going to go to sleep after um, so that's your time just to wake up earlier do your exercise 
keep your um, keep your fast, do your seri, and then kind of carry on your day. Um, so as I said, for personally for me, that little bit before um, iftar works well because if I suddenly felt unwell, if I needed a drink, um, I just know that it's not that long before I open my fast that I don't feel like it's kind of impacted my fast or felt like I'm going to break it for any reason. Um, so that's works for me. But I'd say trying to maybe try each way and then see which one kind of works for you, how it makes the rest of your day and then what you can do is um for the next day or like you know the next week or however long we've got left you can then keep that incorporated in into your routine really um so what else did i want to talk about really ah um so finishing off really so as i said i'm a physiotherapist so around the world that's also known as a physical therapist so although it's very much physical demand um and physical exercise and physical treatment a lot of it is to do with how it affects our mental well-being and how we can do everyday stuff with ease so i am not a specialist in food but i am going to give you a few tips before i go so in terms of if you're bringing in exercise into your routine in ramadan you want to make sure that you're getting that hydration in um, so that 1.5 to 2 litres of water, so as soon as you open your fast, get your, get your glass, have your water and then ever so often until you go to bed in the morning, you want to keep that hydration. So between those hours you want to get roughly that 1.5, it varies slightly um, depending on your height and your weight um, and there's lots of free kind of, um, if you Google kind of how much water I should drink, there's like little calculators you can put your weight and um, height etc in to work out how much you need so that's quite useful but 1.5 is generally um, a good starting point um, so measure out how much one glass is that you use and then see how many of those you would need to have to make your 1.5 and remember it doesn't have to be purely just water you can also think about the fact that when you're having like fruits to open your fast like your you know your watermelons your cucumbers all those things are water based um uh, foods so they will give you hydration as well so that's also another way to put it in um, if you're not you still or don't want to drink so much water and so that's good for the hydration especially if you're going to do the physical activity um, during the day as well um, keep up your protein um, so having you know your meat or your dals or your pulses so you're getting that energy because when you're doing exercise you need that kind of element of protein as well um, and for me I think the biggest thing that I find that kind of changed the way I eat in order to enhance my physical and mental well-being I would say so I've got three kids so I definitely have quite a bit of a, a physical uh, physical and mental demand on myself as well as my job is um, I try to look at my plate like a rainbow so thinking okay I've got lots of reds what can I make what can I put on the plate to make a bit more greens what can I put on the plate to make a bit of purple so maybe I'll add a bit of red cabbage in or you know I'll add some mixed peppers in so when you look at your plate that you're going to eat that it has lots of different colors and all the different colors will bring the variety of food that we need the different vitamins and minerals we need and give you that balance really um, and just trying to um, decrease the amount of days that you have the fried food um, as your iftari. So my mouth is getting nice and dry and especially talking about food it's making me hungry. Um, so I am going to wrap it up there, I'm going to flick through, I'm going to um, take some notes of the questions um, and inshallah I will answer them under the video and also I am back next Monday at five o'clock purely to do a question and answer session um, and I'm back this Saturday at um, five o'clock I think or three o'clock I will double check but this Saturday I'm back and I will be doing a workout with you that you can just open your body and stretch and feel mobile get rid of any aches and any tension you've got and give you an idea of what we can do so I'm going to have a quick flick through Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for Ab for having me. Um, I'm wishing you all a very blessed and peaceful Ramadan. Uh, and inshallah, I'll see you on Saturday and next Monday, okay? So I'll flick through and thank you so much.